Okay, so now that I've explained to you what blueprints are, I'm going to show you quickly what we're going to do with them in this chapter. So as you can see, there's a few bits now going on in this level, which I'll demonstrate for you before we start making the door. So I'm just going to press play up here. Okay, so you can see that there's a door now. We've got this um, something kind of hidden behind the smoke of the fire. So let's see what happens if we try and escape. So we'll go to the door and it says door lock, key card required in the top corner. I'll just show you that again. So it's just at the moment using something called the print string. We're going to add a UI to the game in a later chapter. So we're just keeping it simple for now. So then we look for the key card. Oh, there it is. But if we just catch the fire on the way through, you can see that in the top left hand corner, there's some health and that's going down by 10 every second. We don't want to die, so we're going to pick the key card up by overlapping it. And then we'll walk to the door. The door now opens because we have the key card. And if we leave our room, well, it'll reset because we don't actually want to leave the room yet. There's nothing out there. And then one final thing that I'll show you that the game does is if we now leave our character in the fire, what's going to happen when their health reaches zero? Well, they're going to die. And then once they've died, oh, oh no, they're dead. Uh, the game will reset so we can resume where we were from. So that's what we're going to be doing in this chapter. And the first step is going to be getting the door to open. So let's get stuck in. Okay, so here we are now back in our level before we added any of that interactivity. And we're going to start putting it together. So the first thing we're going to need is just to bring the door mesh in, which is part of the chapter three asset. So I'll just show you in the course resources folder. In chapter three, we've got these two meshes. So we've got door underscore small, and we've also got key card. So we need to make sure that we have those unzipped ready to go. Let's just go back into Unreal Engine. And then we're going to import the door mesh into our folder and just get that set up. So let's go to our meshes folder. I'm going to right click in some empty space and choose import. Then I'll go into my chapter three folder find the door small, click on open. You should be pretty familiar with all this from the last chapter. So I'm just going to check my settings. I don't want to create the material. I don't want to import textures. Everything else looks good. So we'll click on import. And then I just want to put the materials on it before I move on. So here's the door. I'll open that up in the static mesh editor like this. And then you can see there are four material slots on this. You can add any materials you want, but I suggest the following. So for this first one, I'm just going to use the floor material. So this M underscore basic floor, and that just adds these blue accents here. The next one, I'm going to use the brush nickel. And that adds most of this metallic stuff in here. And then this one, I'm actually going to use, I'm going to type the word black. And this material is not meant for this at all, really. But it gives us a black material without us having to make a material. So I'm just going to choose that. So it's called M Light Stage Skybox Black. And it just adds this black area here. And then the last one is going to be Basic Wall. There it is. And that gives us all the materials we need on our door. So then I can click on Save. And I can just close that for now. So if we didn't want this door to open, we could just now add that static mesh into the level like we did everything else. But we do want it to open, so we need to do a few more steps before we start bringing this in. So I'm going to go into my content drawer, go to the content folder, and I'm going to create a new folder in here, which I'm going to call Blueprints. Perfect. Okay, I'm now going to go into that folder. And we're going to create our first blueprint. So in order to do that, we're going to right click and we're going to choose blueprint class. That's what we need to do. So we'll click on this. There it is. And you see we've got um, all these different parent classes that we can choose. And we're going to look at many of these as we go through this course. Uh, but for this one, we're going to choose the most basic type, which is an actor. An actor is an object that can be placed or spawned in the world. So we'll click on that. And I'm going to call it BP underscore door which makes sense okay let's open that up then and we can start building it so here we are in our blueprint editor and you can see it's got all the same windows that we looked at earlier and the first thing we want to do is actually add the door mesh in because at the moment this is completely empty so up in the components section up here we're going to click on add and we're going to choose static mesh so i'm just going to start typing static and it'll come up as a suggestion so there's static mesh and I'm just going to call it door. Lovely. 
And then with this, I'm going to go over here in the details for it. And under the static mesh section, we have to tell it that we want it to be the door. So let's search for door. And there are a couple uh, because there are some in the start content. But I want SM underscore door underscore small, which is the one that we've just imported. There it is. Beautiful. The next thing we want to do is set a collision box so that when the player overlaps it, we can have our interactive stuff happen. We're going to have some game logic happen when they overlap. So we need to add a box collision to our blueprint. So what I'm going to do first of all is just click on this BP underscore door because I don't want this to be a child of the door. So I've gone back up to the top level here. I'm going to click on add and type box and then box collision comes up as a suggestion. And I'll just leave it called box, that's fine. And then what we want to do is have this so that it extends in front of and behind the door so it's got like a bigger area to overlap. So I'm going to bring it out in front about that far. I'm just going to roughly match the height of the door and I'll go slightly wider like that. So that's now giving the player somewhere to overlap as they get close to the door to have it open. And we can always edit this later if it's not big enough. Okay, so let's make this interactive. That's everything we need to add into the blueprint at the moment. So we're going to go to our event graph. Here it is. And it starts off with these three events. So we've got event begin play, something that will happen as soon as we press play. Event act to begin overlap, which is kind of like what we want, but not exactly. And there's event tick, which happens every tick. We'll get into what ticks are later. But actually, for what we're doing now, we don't want any of these. So I'm going to delete all three. Bye. Okay, we want to do something when it specifically happens to this box. So I'm going to click on the box to make sure that when I create a new node, Unreal Engine knows I want it to relate to that node. I'm going to right click in my graph over here. And I'm going to type on component begin. And then this will come up on, on component begin overlap. The box is a component, so we're not saying the entire blueprint, just that component on when something begins overlapping with it, and we get this. And there's lots of different outputs on this, but we don't need to worry about all of them, don't worry. We just need to get this set up to do what we need it to do. And the first thing we need to know is what exactly is overlapping with this box collision, and we want to know if it's the player or not. If it's anything else, we don't want this action to trigger, so we need to do that check first. So the way that we do that is we're looking for other actor. So we're going to drag out of here. So you can just see I clicked on there and dragged out. And we get a blue wire. And we now need to do something called casting, which is going to talk to another blueprint. It's going to be that third person blueprint we looked at in the last step. So if I'm just start typing cast to third, and then there are only two options, third person character or third person game mode. We want third person character. So it's going to check, is the other actor this third person character? That's good. So if that is true, what we want to do next is actually have the door open. So we need to get a reference to the door. And it's actually down here as a component. And what we can do is just get the door. I'm going to drag it in, let go. And you can either get or set something we want to get at the moment, like that. And then from here, what I want to do is set relative location. And this is going to move the door out of the way, basically. And what we can do here, we've got these inputs on this particular node that allow us to do the new location. In Unreal Engine, the one for height is Z, and I want the door to move up. And so if we put in Z, the number 200, that should do everything we want it to do. And then what we're going to do is just connect this up like that. So this white connection here is what's happening so when this happens check if it is the third person character if it fails we don't want it to do anything so we'll leave that blank if it happens if it is that character it's going to do this which is to set the relative location of the door so now would be a good time to test this out and see if it works so what we need to do now is save the blueprint and then whenever we make a change we have to do something called compile and at the moment you can see there it's dirty and it needs to be recompiled. So we'll give that a click and then it says good to go, which means we haven't made any mistakes. It should just work. So now I'm going to go back to my level. I'm going to get my blueprint. I'm going to place it 
here. Well, I'm going to try. Bring it out of the floor. I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees. And then I'm going to place it in the doorway. You can see it's just a little bit off to the side. So I'm just going to change my snaps down to five and see if that will work. That looks like a pretty good fit. So I'm fairly happy with the location of that door. And then what I want to do is just test it out. So let's press play. And then I'm going to run up to the door. And you can see it's moved up. Now I can see it, which is not really what I wanted to happen. But you can see the door does move up. Now I would also like it to close when I run away, which is not happening. So I've got a couple of changes that I need to make. First of all, it's just going to be, I'm going to move this up here. Move it back so that I can't see it through the wall. And then I'm going to move it back down. Just make sure I've got the height right. Yep, that looks okay. I'll test that again. So when I run up to the door, yep, it looks like the door's disappeared, but we know it's just moved up. That's cool. Right, now what we need to do is get this to close. So what we need to do essentially is reverse what's happening here. And that's what we'll do. So we're going to go back to our box collision. I'm going to right click in here, and this is going to be on component end overlap. So when the player stops overlapping that box, we need to check if it's the third person character again. So let's go other actor, cast to third person character. And if it is the third person character, we're going to set the relative location again. Now, what I can do this time is just copy this. So if I press Control and C, and I've copied both parts, move my mouse down here, Control and V to paste. I'm going to connect that up. And I just need to set my relative position back to zero on Z. And that should now work pretty nicely. So let's compile that. I'll save it as well, because that's just good practice. And then we'll have a look at whether or not this opens and closes. Open, close, open, close. Hey, it worked. OK, then we've now got our first blueprint with actual interactivity and blueprints that works. And we're going to leave it there for this step. But in the next step, we're going to do part two of the door and we're going to get it to open and close smoothly using something called a timeline in the blueprints. So I will see you in the next step where we'll get that set up. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. If you'd like to help me create more content like this, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. The contributions I get through Patreon make a huge difference in keeping this channel going. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to make sure you don't miss my upcoming tutorials. Your support and engagement mean the world to me and help my channel continue to grow. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.